Hey there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. I'm your host Patson and today we're gonna be taking a look at r slash pro revenge where a cheating wife and her affair partner gets their life absolutely ruined. Let's begin. Lying and using people? I got you. Posted by reddit user don't give up the shoe. This one needs background to fully understand why I went out of my way for this revenge. My best friend was married for 10 years with his ex for a total of 13 years. He was absolutely head over heels in love with her like I had never seen before, which I never understood due to her alcohol abuse. She would take it out on him, and when he'd be venting about it he'd always fall back on. It's not her it's the illness, a very respectable and admirable stance on it. Last year she asked for a divorce because after years of what I would call abuse, he had simply run out of gas. Her reasoning for asking for one. When she got fired for testing positive for weed, he wasn't empathetic enough. He admits he wasn't because it had come on the back of one of her drunken tirades, where she told him he was a piece of shit who was always trying to control her. When all the ever tried to get her away from was booze for the way she treated him when she was drunk. It took him forever to move on from this with the divorce following shortly after. And earlier this year after thinking he was moving on, he calls me to come over and he's in a bad way. I arrive and he is absolutely fall down level of drunk. Going on that she didn't ask for a divorce for those reasons that she had really been cheating with several other people. The next morning when he's more coherent, I ask him how he knew. He was cleaning out the spare room and selling or donating stuff he didn't need anymore and when he went to clear an old tablet, she was still logged on and all of the evidence was there. He gets that out and says he's going back to bed and asks me to lock up when I leave. Before I left, I looked at the tablet. After seeing what I saw, I wanted to find a way to get even with the horrible and conniving woman, so I took pictures of it all and left. When I got home I started looking up information about these people. Two of them were just normal guys, whether they knew she was married or not I don't know. But the third? Well, the third comes up as a registered sex offender, still on probation for being such a disgusting pile of shit, and address listed as 123 Lane, City, State, Chomo knew that she was married. I immediately knew what I was gonna do. Shomo didn't live at 123 Lane. Shomo was living with the conniving ex. She made regular posts about their time together, on top of that she is an avid weed user and has several firearms because she enjoys sport shooting. So I go into the state's sex offender site and make a report of Shomo not actually living where he's registered and that Shomo is living in a home with what he has no right to being a convicted felon and on parole. I include screenshots of the social media posts and all to back it up. I was thinking little would happen but an inconvenience to their lives. Boy was I wrong. She broke her typical posts with nothing serious trend on social media yesterday. With this gem, my year can't get any worse. Chomo lost his job and I am now facing eviction because I can't afford my rent. So I go on the state court system site to see if it's related, and yes it was. Chomo was rearrested. She clearly can't post bail or Chomo would be out. The job she took after being fired definitely can't support her lifestyle. So he's probably going back to prison or at least jail and she's a breath away from being homeless. I don't know if I'd ever tell my best friend I was the one behind this. But he is definitely ecstatic to see a horrible woman and sewer rat get what they deserve. Part of me wants to put up the sex offender registration link and that it's sitting in jail and say something to the effect of it's a little more than losing a job. But not wanting to make my best friend's life harder I'll just let sleeping dog lie. Oh wow, they both sound like terrible human beings, and I'm glad that your friend is free. And yes, OP, this is one that you should take to your grave. You have to make that decision now and resolve that no matter what, there is never a good enough reason for you to tell. You have to decide that now ahead of time, because there is going to be at least one time where you think this is going to be a good idea to tell your friend. And that's when you need to tell yourself. I don't remember the reason right now but I will later, so I'm going to hold tight until this urge passes. And if it's still a good idea later, you can tell your friend then, OP. So go be like Batman in this case and let the satisfaction of a job well done be its own reward. I'm Batman. And now, for today's second story. The divorce is final, will be the first Christmas apart, and cheating ex has the kids and wants to do it together. Any thoughts? Posted by Reddit user instantly regret this. Title says it all. I and my ex-wife were together 18 years, married 14 years, and have two kids, 10 and 13. She carried on a five-year-long affair with a remote work colleague and was physical with him on business trips multiple times per year during that time. Everything else was over Zoom, I learned later, almost daily. Separation and custody agreements are signed. 
Divorced final. And I'm feeling good but still pulling myself out of a really dark place with it all. I'm definitely in the anger stage of it all and haven't yet gotten to a place of acceptance or even, meh. She's apparently ended the relationship with the affair partner, but still works with him. It has already moved on with someone new who is local. So my point of the post and where I could use some opinions. She has the kids for Christmas this year, our first one apart. But she has reached out asking if we could do Christmas morning all together for the kids because it's what they've indicated they want. I honestly can't stand the sight of her and have gone no contact except for kid-related items. I told her we would not be doing Christmas together, but that the kids are welcome to open gifts here later that morning if they want. The kids know nothing of her affair right now, and I don't plan to expose them to that. I'm sure they'll find out or figure it out at some point when they're older, but I'm going to do everything I can to protect them from it and not involve them in any drama. And while I do feel good about my decision, I'm aching knowing that they're going to be incredibly upset Christmas morning, and I know I will be alone. How have others in this situation handled this? I know I wouldn't be able to put on a happy face even if we did do it together, so why even try, right? It's just so fucking upsetting. Why do I feel guilty for not being willing to pretend anymore that things between us are amicable and rosy? Thanks in advance for any and all opinions. I would highly recommend that you continue your no-contact strategy and not attend Christmas with her. She needs to realize something. She needs to realize that you are not there for her anymore. And that includes circumstances like Christmas or other holidays and events. What would you do if her new guy is there? Do you really want to face that, buddy? Her, rubbing in your face her new life and flaunting her Christmas with the kids to show you up. Look, I know it's hard with the kids, but you have to tell them the truth so you can protect them. So you can protect yourself. They need to know. They need to understand the reason for your refusal. But they can't even begin to understand because you won't fucking tell them. Whether you like it or not, they are already involved in the drama. Do you know why? Because they are a part of your fucking family, dude. Look, OP, kids are stronger than you think. They will understand if you explain it properly. They can get over it. Stay clear of her completely unless absolutely necessary and move on with your life. You'll get the kids within a few days and you can do your own Christmas with them. Good luck, OP. I hope you can move on. And now, for today's final story. I'm a completely unsuspecting fool. Posted by Reddit user Effective Sleep 4907 After 38 years of marriage, three grown married children, and five precious grandchildren, she pulls this shit. I have worked my ass off to finally be debt-free, and two years away from retirement. She tells me she is in Arizona for an educator's conference she is required to attend. I dropped her lying ass off at the airport with plans to pick her up Thursday. A co-worker of mine is in Vegas for a PBR event. He sends me a picture of her in a casino with our primary care physician. So, it's Christmas and all the kids are coming here. I have looked forward to hunting with my son and grandsons. I don't know if I should blow the thing to hell or play it cool until after Christmas. I guess I could gather more evidence if I just pick her up and act as if all is well. I am not sure I can do that. But the other choice is to devastate my children at a terrible time of the year. This bitch sang a solo in church Sunday before she caught a flight on Monday to spend the week fucking the doctor. I have never suspected her cheating in over 40 years of our relationship. I damn sure never have. I guess the life I was so secure in is over. I am glad my parents are not here to see this. I may just catch a flight tomorrow and find their ass. Probably use different names. The hell of it is both my brothers are dead and there is nobody I can tell this shit to. Maybe the pastor. Hell, she is probably blowing him too. Now for OPS update. Thanks to everyone for your support over the last few days. I have received many messages asking for updates. I have also been given good advice, and it has given me the opportunity to vent at a time I have to act as if all is well. 1. I took some time off from work and I'm at my camp. 2. My wife's sister picked her up at the airport Thursday evening. 3. I hired a lawyer and a private investigator recommended by the lawyer. 4. I have not confronted my wife, nor have I told anyone about the pictures from Vegas other than my lawyers and read it. 5. My wife believes I am at the camp because a big buck I have hunted for a couple of seasons is back on my plot cameras. 6. We have talked by phone and texted several times. Just ordinary conversation. She has no reason to suspect I have started an investigation into her trip or her life. Every communication has ended with I love you just as it always has. 7. I have followed my lawyer's advice concerning our financial position. 
8. The private investigator has already informed me he was able to confirm an affair has existed between her and the doctor for over a year. We will learn in time how long it has gone on. 9. She did not attend a conference in Arizona. She spent every night she was gone in Vegas. I intend to confront her when the private investigator completes his investigation. We believe they will meet since I am out of town. I intend to give them ample opportunity to do so before I come home. I was not aware that most affairs occur in the demographic group of 55 to 70 years old. I thought we had a very good marriage. She seemed content with where we were in life, and I believed she loved me as I did her. I loved her completely. Everything seems so surreal. Each day has brought things to light I never would have imagined. I guess at this point I want to know how many years of my life have been a lie, and why the life we had was not enough. Why was I not enough? Why was our children and grandchildren not enough? She is a beautiful woman. I always thought it was inside and out. I am going to divorce her. There is no path to reconciliation. I am not sure how scorched earth I will go. I am very angry at both of them. I will confront the doctor and his wife together. I can't say today exactly what else I will do. I think I have to take it one step at a time. And the first step is to learn as much as I can before they have a chance to collaborate their story. He may just be the latest in line. I am not sure why I posted on Reddit, but I am glad I did. I wish I had chosen different language and apologize for the profanity. Thanks again for your support. I appreciate your concern for a stranger. So, OP, you had already done the first three steps of a good confrontation. You're only missing three more. Number four, serve her where it hurts the most, if possible, without confronting her previously. Number five, after serving her, be sure to get the betrayal public, at least to both of your families and mutual friends, so she's not able to twist it, making you look like the bad guy. And number six, inform the other betrayed spouse. Give her all the evidences that you have gathered. She deserves to know the truth just as much as you did, OP. So inform her. Let her make decisions. Destroy the affair partner's life. Good luck. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my YouTube channel for you to watch absolutely free. So consider clicking that super thanks just below the video title or you can use my PayPal in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you really like it, Make sure to subscribe to Patson to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.